Alex Rodriguez was like a kid. He went to his first Oscars last night, and it was, I imagine, fascinating. It, it was so much fun. Uh, Look at you. you know, first of all, I thought once I got in the building, they weren't going to kick me out. <laughs> but <laughs> I was wearing this white cocktail, as you see there. There's um, yeah. this tuxedo. And all the big stars thought I was, uh, you know, ordering and, uh, and giving out hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah. At one point, Bradley Cooper, I'm behind Cooper and Gaga. And Bradley turns around and says, hey, can you give me another vodka soda? <laughs> <laughs> what a night, though. Cooper, awesome. Lady Gaga performing. By the way, this is something in baseball. Baseball has analytics. I get them. I'm not anti-intellectual here. Mm -hmm. But I believe in manalytics. Mm -hmm. Is that in the end, I want Cody Bellinger in big games. I don't want this sport reduced in numbers. You were in a building last night. Mm -hmm. Like, stars matter. By the way, the ratings did not dip without a host. Mm -hmm. The ratings were fine because Brady... Uh, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga were performing. What did you make of the environment last night? Yeah, it, it, it felt big, and it felt like this is something that you needed to be at. It was special to have a ticket. You know, I was like the Marlin man. I was right there in the middle with his white jacket. But here's what I noticed, in all seriousness. You know, I, I had a chance to spend a little time with, you know, Bob Iger and his wife, Willow Bay. Yeah. And Bob is probably the most powerful man in the building. He's right. the most powerful person in the building. And... But the reason why in the past billions of people around the world are watching is because of stars, right? It's because of Gaga and Bradley. And sports is no different. Uh, if you think about sports, you still need the big stars. This is, this is why I've said this about baseball. They can at times squish mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Like Bryce Harper. I will make the argument, even with the Padres, Alex, mm -hmm. that Manny Machado is not a $30 million player a year. He's about 18 mm -hmm. because they're going to sell sweets at double the rate, mm -hmm. 12 bucks a Heineken. Let's talk about the economics of baseball. This fear that a $30 million player is buries a franchise. Mm -hmm. Do you buy that? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, look, it's interesting. I'm always going to take the side of the players because what we have to do with our players is we have to draft them. We have to develop them. And then we have to pay them. And that arc is called the American dream. And that works in Hollywood. It works in baseball and sports. And it works in America. You know, it's funny. People c scream and shout when a player signs for $300 million. But when the Dodgers trade for north of $2 billion, or the Marlins trade for north of a billion, nobody says anything. It's like big, big, bad America is supposed to make all the economics. But in a world, it should be more democratic. And if the industry has gone from a billion dollars to $10 billion, it's good for it to be spread around and for players to get paid in a big way, and it's guaranteed. Manny Machado to the Padres. Do you like it? Now, some people say he doesn't run hard to first. I couldn't give a rip. He gives yeah. me 37 and 100, and he right. plays 155 games. How do you think it works, though? Because, by the way, you know this. That $300 million contract, baseball and golf have idle time. Mm -hmm. It's a mental game. Mm -hmm. Players have signed that, yourself included, and acknowledge it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You're driving to the ballpark thinking, i got to go four for four tonight. Yeah. Do you think it's too much for Machado, having to carry a young Padre yeah. team? Uh, no. I, first of all, I think he made an interesting decision, but for me it's pretty easy. Someone offers you $300 million, you're going to deal with a lot, right? And San Diego and the weather's not bad either. But I like Eric Hosmer across the way, yeah. two Miami boys, both plus defenders. I like they have good pitching, and they have the number one farm system in, yes. in baseball. Yes, they do. So all of that is great. <clears throat> There's this kind of rhetoric going around baseball that 10-year contracts uh, is bad. I don't I, love them. I, I disagree. And here's why I disagree. You can't put them in a vacuum, right? I think the greatest contract maybe ever signed, maybe over the last 25 years, is Mike Trout got a 10-year contract at probably 45 or 55 cents to the dollar, right? When you're 23, it's in your contract, great. When you're 33, it's not so great. Bryce Harper, where does he work? I mean, he, you know, we've got some analytics, defensive shifts. He's probably not going to be a 300 hitter, but I, I've said this. <clears throat> Bryce Harper gets me to a game. Yeah. Okay, Steph Curry, my son bought Steph Curry shoes. There are, if I'm an owner, I want Bryce Harper over mm -hmm. Manny Machado. Mm -hmm. If I'm a GM, it may be the opposite. Where does he fit to you? He fits anywhere where you want to win and sell tickets. I think Bryce Harper is more valuable today than he, he's ever been. Really? Because the popularities of players are going down. So when you're the one anomaly or one of two or three, then you become LeBron James and there is no Steph Curry. But the game is doing so well economically. I'll, I'll give you an example. You look at the Yes Network, which the was Yankees. started by George Steinbrenner and the Yankees, right? Yes. 
The Yes Network has 14 million people paying $7 a month. That's $98 million a month, right? Times 12, that's a little bit over a billion dollars. If you cut the expenses in half, and you say the, the company's netting around $450 million, and you put a 20-time multiple on that, f forget 20 times, about a 10-time multiple. You're talking about a $9 billion TV station. So if you can take that 14 million subscribed and take that to 15 or 16, boy, Manny, a guy like Harper could be worth 50, if not $100 million per year. You know, it's funny. Most of us embrace the NBA star. Mm -hmm. We put our arms around Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. We fight for him. We don't fight for baseball players' mm -hmm. money. Isn't that interesting? It, it, it's interesting, but what happened is when you introduce analytics into the game of baseball in a big way, and I like analytics, but I also like the human element. And what happens is you're setting yourself up for an arbitration every year. And baseball is a game, is a marathon, not a sprint. And it takes time to develop trust with your management, with your teammates, with the media, and with the fans. And what was great about baseball when we, you and I grew up is you had Edgar Martinez in Seattle for 15, 20 years. You had the Dodger infield, Dave Lopez, Lopes, and you know, Ron Russell, Say, Garvey. And Garvey. Like those days are over. So if you're bringing analytics and you're taking the human element and the character, there's a world where you get enough hedges, you know, like hedge fund guys are running teams now. You get enough, you get a large group to say, I, no offense to Chan Ho Park, Chan Ho Park is greater than Andy Pettit. And that may be true in numbers, but if you ask someone in New York, they'll say, not in New York, not in pinstripes, and not in October. So there's a place for analytics but, boy, you have to be able to trust your, your eyes. Uh, Kyler Murray chose football over baseball. Now, you were – you could have played football. You're, you kind of fall into the Dave Winfield thing. You, both you guys made a decision at about 13 what sport you were going to. You could have gone on a bunch of paths, and you could have been a pro athlete. You could have gone to the Miami Hurricanes and been a quarterback. You chose baseball. So, Kyler Murray – uh, even though not prototypical size of a quarterback, I do think he's a first-round talent. The game's changed. It's more collegiate-looking. Uh, he made a choice for football. You did baseball. Do you think he made the right choice, and why did you make yours? Yeah, I don't know enough about him as a player, especially in baseball. But but for me, you know, I come from a Dominican background. My father played baseball, and I think that's where my superpower, you know, laid. My mother was a humongous advocate to say, Enough with football. <laughs> Dominicans are not quarterbacks. They're right. shortstops. So right. go play shortstop. Okay. So, <laughs> so your family it. empirically was behind the baseball <clears throat> move. They don't even know how to spell football. It just wasn't part of the culture. No. When, when you – one of the things about the Yankees that's interesting, Yankees have a history of bringing in big stars. Mm -hmm. But they also have a history of Scott Brocious mm -hmm. and uh, of uh, David Wells mm -hmm. and guys that are good players but sort of rise in the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you worry at all about the Yankees? A lot of money, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stan. It's a lot of Broadway. Do they have, like you called it, the, the, the humanity? Mm -hmm. Do they have the guy that – T sacrifices mm -hmm. like when I look at the Yankees and I look at the Red Sox I think the Red Sox have a perfect combination of grinders mm -hmm. and David Price mm -hmm. and Mookie Betts mm -hmm. rising star star grinder do the Yankees have that you know everything's about balance right and right if I have Tom Brady I can't bring in Dan Marino right um if I have, if I have magic I can't bring in Stockton I need Kareem right and you need uh, assets that complement each other. Exactly. Set of skills. Do right? the Yankees have that? Well, I think it, what was interesting when you have Judge and they bring in Stanton is almost like the same player. Exactly. You know, one is making over three hundred million dollars, even though the Yankees only inherited only two hundred and sixty million. You know, you have a guy like Aaron Judge who is just as good, making half a million dollars, right? I mean, it's all about capital allocation and and how do you deploy your capital and how do you use your resources. You know, it's, it's, it's just like building a house. And if you have a 5,000-square-foot house, you can't have 12 garages, right? And if you have uh, – it, it's all about complementary. And what the Yankees did so well for so long was having the – Complementary players. Yeah. The that were comfortable yeah. with that. Yeah. They could have you and Jeter and Bernie. Yeah. But they had to have three starters. And I just I, – I watched the Red Sox last – And a what, closer. Well, yeah, they have to have a number three starter and a closer. But yeah. I, when I watched the Yankees – the greatest Yankee teams that you were part of 
they always had complimentary players. I thought Boston did a great job with that last year. And I just don't know if the Yankees have that. You know, Dombrowski to me is um, uh, the the gold standard today. He has 21 years between championships. Dave, you're Dave Dombrowski. The GM. Yeah, the GM president now of, of, of the Red Sox. Um, he, he has 21 years in between championships with the Marlins in 97 and last year with the Red Sox. What's interesting about Dombrowski, while he has all the big data, and Boston Red Sox are big into big data, yeah. he has one competitive advantage. He tells his manager in the World Series and the playoffs, do as you please, trust your eyes. You have the numbers there as an asset, but not as a crutch. What I want you to do is go be con unconventional. And that's why he has the freedom yes. to get Nathan Evaldi and say, you're going to pitch the fifth, the seventh you, price you bring in. It's such a competitive advantage versus the manager that he's going. If you have a straight jacket, Colin, and you can't manage because you have to look at numbers and what guys up there are doing in the press box, and I have the total freedom to just free fall and just go play hurry up offense and go, Nathan, I'm going to pick my 25 guys and I'm going to use them with full autonomy, you're dead and I'm going to beat you. And that's what Alex Cora did last year. Props uh, to Dombrowski. Bryce Harper, where's he land? USA Today is reporting that Bryce Harper is expected to make his decision by the end of the week. Where do you think he lands? Well, if, if it's just a guess because I don't know. I, I think he's he's a great fit in uh, Philly and he's a great fit in uh, San Francisco. But a guy like Bryce Harper at his age with his talent, the best baseball is still ahead of him. And I'm a big believer in Bryce. I'm very happy for Manny Machado. By the way, this was a big win for baseball. Getting Manny Machado $300 million is a win for the Players Association. In any business, Colin, you need equality, not just in sports, but in life. And, you know, I, I, I don't want the players to get so discouraged, and I never want them to get angry with Major League Baseball. I want them to work together. The pie's at $10 billion. Commissioner Rob Manfred is laser-focused on getting it to $15 billion. Let's spread it around. Let the players make money. Let the umpires make money. It's healthy. Let the game grow. By the way, do you miss just the guys? Do you miss oh, yeah. the locker room? I miss the game. I miss the game every day. I mean, I, I wish I was at spring training right now in pinstripes, you know, hitting the middle of the lineup. There is nothing better in my life that I've ever done besides having my two beautiful daughters than playing baseball and being a New York Yankee. It's great, isn't I it? I miss it every day. It is great. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.